Well, it's been a while. <laughs> Hello, YouTube. Honestly, I have wanted to talk to you guys for a minute. I had a bunch of different ideas floating through my head, but I think I figured out roughly what I want to do with YouTube content for the time being. Keep it focused on the job hunt itself. Speaking of that, over the past few months, it's been a lot of learning. It's been a slow, painful, but necessary learning process. And one of the main things I had to learn about was interviews, which honestly, I thought I'd be more prepared for than I was because when I initially went into this whole job hunt thing, I thought I'd have a job months from now, obviously. But I didn't realize how ill-prepared I was until I kept just messing up interviews where I thought I realistically had a chance. And then it took me messing up an interview so badly that I can honestly tell you I didn't deserve a call back. I think I've mentioned that before. And then that got me to take my interview preparation a lot more seriously than I was because I was being very relaxed with it. And now I'm just going to share with you what actively helped me change how I approach my interviews and must help me land more final stages, second stage interviews, more in-person interviews, just help me get close to a job even though I haven't got one yet. All I did was I made notes in a, in a very specific way because I basically just broke down all the major questions they'd asked me and all the questions that constantly got repeated and for each company I applied for I made sure I could write at least three to four bullet points about each at least and the goal was never to try and remember everything but the goal was to do this exercise enough to where when they asked me questions where I could find something I could relate it was easier to do because I'm someone who naturally finds interviews very nerve-wracking because for me it's as if the job is right there and all you have to do is sell yourself and to me it feels like a very pressurized situation and that's just how i've always seen them and one of the best ways i found myself approaching these interviews in the best way possible was just preparing this way because it makes me calmer because i don't have to think about wowing them with the personality i'm gonna wow you how i wow everybody else by coming in being prepared and showing you my best and what you will consistently get from me day in and day out. Because this is the same level of detail I'd applied to news stories in the past, or I've applied to anything I've done journalistically, even if they didn't get the highest grade, I still worked hard on those things. I still took on the feedback, whether it was a 50, a 60, or a 70 grade I got in the end. I took on the feedback and I applied it to whatever it is I was doing to the best of my ability. And for the most part, when I did it well, it worked out for the best. And I'm going to break down some of the most obvious questions you get as a journalist who has been applying for entry level jobs. Hold on, give me a second. Let me break down the most common questions I have according to the last job I've done this for, which was a job with NewsQuest, who I had an interview with yesterday. First category was always general, so that's like more information about the role itself, so what kind of publication it is, and just kind of information that is pretty easy to find anywhere so it'll usually be on a LinkedIn job description places like that so typically information about who they are what the role is and the overview of what I'd be doing second thing for me is the audience because they often ask questions about how well do you know the audience how well do you know the people of the specific location have you done local news reporting before and when these questions come up, being able to bring up things about the audience, so who the people are, what they're known for, what are their passions, what are the things that drive the people who read your publication. Especially if you're applying for business to business roles, which is a very specific form of journalism where you're covering a specific industry and interviewing industry experts and your publication is specifically for industry experts or people within that industry. So you just wanna know if I'm writing for a law publication, lawyers, law firms, politicians, and potentially people who are just interested in law generally. And if it's, uh, if it's a specific area, if it's a specific local town or whatever, obviously people within that town, local businesses, places like that. Second one was reasons why you want to work. Because obviously you've applied for the job. You wouldn't have applied for the job if there wasn't a vague part of you that could see you working there. So what I've done was I would typically put down one of my advantages I have and this would be the part where I get a little bit cocky, reasonably cocky, but still big headed in a way because you have to sell yourself. 
So what I would do is I'd put down what qualifications I have that would help me with the role. Because obviously I've done broadcast journalism, the vast majority of the roles I'm applying for are still on the traditional print model, even though everything's shifting digitally. But because of my experience in broadcast, that's one advantage. I also really like reporting on niche things and niche areas. And I also have a deep commitment to quality. So for me, those are always the three things I always put down because it's very easy for me to brag about myself and then apply it to the specific situation now because those are the three main qualities I bring across the board to any organization. And then this is very similar, but it's why I'm the ideal candidate. So this would be the part where they ask you things like, how do you feel about working here in this location? How do you feel about working in this small team, this big team? And then that's where you can mention your specifics like the things you do that make you good at the job so i like working in teams i fundamentally believe journalism works best when everyone is on the same page you all bring different skills to the table but you all want to provide quality journalism since i know that about myself i make sure that i make i make it clear that i love being a team player and i also love taking charge of things that's one of the main things a lot of these entry-level roles are looking for because oftentimes they want to grow someone into new positions and then the, a lot of publications have asked me what do I think about the publication? This is an obvious thing that I used to slip up on quite a bit. You literally just have to read the publication and analyze what you like and what you don't like. Sounds very primary school, easier said than done, but if you do it well enough, you can sound like the most researched person in the room. Because oftentimes when I've really explored this category, it's allowed me to come across to employers and be like, someone who's appeared to do their research and they've even said it themselves when they've interviewed me whether it's been a screening interview a first stage a second stage whatever it's been doing your research can literally make you seem like the one person who genuinely cared about this position specifically and not just being a journalist and being a salaried man or woman and then finally the demographic that's just again stuff about the areas how many people are generally in this organization in this industry in this local area What's this organization or area known for? Is there anything in particular that they've done? And that's just what I put there to frankly make myself just that bit more prepared. Again, show a bit of that passion. So overall, I hope that helps. I hope that helps you if you're a journalist on the job hunt. And generally, if you're someone who struggles with job interviews, hopefully this helps you be a bit calmer if you use this format because I feel like it helped me quite a bit. Just feel calmer about job interviews because they always make me really anxious. Anyways, I wish you all the best. Hopefully you will have jobs or if, or if you don't, you're very close to having a job. And I will keep you guys updated.